Alan McNish is alongside me and we're answering user questions from you at Sim Raceway. Martin Hall has the next question for you and he, this is an interesting question I'm very, I'm very excited about your answer about this and You're how you excited about it. I am, I am and you'll understand why I asked the question. He says who would be your ideal replacement as a teammate for Dindo Capello and in fairness he has said not necessarily a name but what characteristics do you think that you and Tom would like to have in the car with you? Oh, you can't afford me. Yeah. And I'm carrying a bit too much success ballast. No, but you're, you're looking a fine figure of a racing driver. Show your shoes. Get your shoes. Come on. These look like fast shoes. Yeah, they are fast shoes. I'm just not so sure about the driver pit stop changes <laughs> and the seat. Unless you can fold the top back and drag me straight out, I think we might be in trouble for that. Yeah, the days of the R8, R10, Fire R15, me out the yeah, side so of it. I think it'd be difficult to get you out of the R18, that's for sure. Okay, so that's you stroked off the list. Now that's a bit more difficult to try and work it out, to be honest with you. I don't that was me thinking I had a second career coming. Yeah, you do, just not as a driver. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Character, right, not well, a name, yeah, hold on a second, forget the name side of it. I don't think, in principle, we can have a replacement for Dindo. I think Dindo is a replaceable. Huge ability just to be able to adapt to things. And he's got a personality that just seemed to work with everyone. There's no one in the pit lane disliked him. No. Not even people that he crashes with disliked him. They could never argue with him. Because he just looked at you, ah, I'm so sorry. But on the other side of it, um, you know, the qualities you look for someone, you look for speed. Mm. Lap time is mm -hmm. important, so you need somebody that is fast and you need someone that is going to fit with the Audi mentality, mm -hmm. um, which is quite different to, say, Toyota, mm -hmm. different to what Persia was, different to what Porsche will be in the future. And in that side of things, someone that will adapt into that, into the environment of understanding that, you know, ultimately all want to win. But if mm -hmm. you can, you do have to sometimes compromise for your teammates and yes. work in that environment. And uh, that's something that I think we've got a good group right now. Lucas mm -hmm. de Grassi, for example, fitted in well in Brazil. Yeah, He did a good job. And uh, Lloyd Duval also did uh, when he came into the team earlier on. We've seen Ben and Andre sort of grow with it. Marcel, we know. Mm -hmm. um, and one driver who I actually think has got a good future as Ollie Jarvis mm -hmm. and Ollie's getting his confidence back mm -hmm. and uh, that's the thing is that they've got to have confidence they've got to have a decent strength of character because Tom and I are quite strong characters you might really? not have noticed that no you might but it's true we, are, we, are, we do have a we do speak our mind sometimes <laughs> and also a good balance for that because <laughs> it's it's tricky but I do not think Dindo is replaceable that's the line I would say that comes through most is it is it important to have just the right amount of ego as a team player, as, as a sports car driver. We, we, we see it in single seater drivers, you always want to beat your teammate and you've got to have that ego. But in some respects in sports cars, do you need to just turn that down a little bit without turning it off? Because you've got to work together, haven't you? You've got to have an ego. And I know, I know you'd, you'd realise I yeah. am very low on that, but you do have to have an ego. No, you do, because that's what pushes you on and drives you, and that's part of the <laughs> whole makeup of the person. And we're we're paid by Audi to win. Mm. We're paid by Audi to push. We're paid by Audi to absolutely screw the last tenth out of the car all the time. And uh, that means that we have to have every bit of drive in there. But that's got to be tempered, and that's partly Dr. Ulrich's control of the, you know, the velvet glove on the shoulder but inside it's an iron hand if you like <laughs> just to keep you under control and uh, you do have to temper it at times but I think coming from single seaters which is what I did as well mm -hmm. you know you come into it you've got to learn that your teammate's speed is your speed so if he's yeah. fast then that's better for you because then you've got more chance of winning if you're faster than him and sort of demoralise him and he loses confidence or he sets the car up in a way where he can't drive it, then ultimately you lose out yeah. because he's in the car half the time so therefore you've got to have that sort of good balance of compromise and driving styles and everything else. And finally, you've got to get on with them because you tend to spend, you know, some years I spent more time with Dindo than I did with my wife 
just because of the amount of travelling, the amount of tests we're doing, the amount of races, PR events, everything else. And so you do have to actually get on with them socially as well. You might need to just draw a veil over that part of it. There you go, Martin. <laughs> That's the answer to your question.